Nothing sucks more than watching your entire team wipe in countdown and saying goodbye to all of that great loot that you know the hunters are going to drop. It's time for a hero to rise to carry everyone on their shoulders. By the way, it's you. For the longest time, I just couldn't get the ongoing directive gear set. It comes rolled with weapon damage cores and its four piece talent. Rules of engagement buffs this by a further 20%. 35% if you run the chess piece. But with the striker's gear set giving you up to 200% weapon damage, ongoing directive is not good enough in comparison to be a pure DPS gear set. Rules of engagement also adds bleed to your bullets. The gear set comes with a status effect buff and the backpack buffs its damage and duration. But even with this, it just can't match the damage potential of a set like Eclipse Protocol, which can wipe entire rooms in one go. But what an ongoing directive gear set can do better than any other gear set is as a support build and this build does it incredibly well in multiple different ways. Rules of engagement not only buffs your weapon damage by 20% it also buffs your entire party by 20%. The survivor's specialization then adds a further 10% buff to all damage so both weapon and skill damage done to targets with stasis effects. The talent perfect opportunistic on the setup backpack then buffs all damage by a over 15% on enemies that you hit with a shotgun or marksman rifle. Now Countdown is fast paced and frenetic, so put that marksman rifle back in your stash now. The way forward is to run with a shotgun, and let's be honest, when you need a shotty in PvE, the Scorpio is everyone's weapon of choice. This is the perfect gun for this build, because it applies status effects and so will trigger rules of engagement, perfect opportunistic, and at 7 stacks it provides a further 20% all damage buff. Even hunters will be melted with the 65% additional weapon damage and 45% all damage. But why use one shotty? When you can use two, I'm also packing an ACS-12 with the talent Vindictive to buff critical hit chance and could quit damage by 15% for a whopping 20 seconds. Even if your teammates are maxed out on critical hit chance, the critical hit damage buff is a nice bonus. You could also use the Grudge which comes with perfect Vindictive or even the LMG Carnage with its 25% weapon damage buff from perfect Sadist. But both of these options will lose the all damage buff from perfect opportunistic. Now all of this is pretty academic if your teammates can't survive long enough to deal damage. That's where you come in, again, because this build is also running perfect vanguard on the pointman chess piece. This awesome talent grants 50% of your armor as bonus armor to all of your allies. Whenever you take out your shield, pop it just before entering battle to tip the odds in your favor. On top of that, it's great for you. Having an invulnerable shield for 5 seconds is a huge buff, but the fact that perfect vanguard's 50% bonus armor also applies to you is even bigger. There are other options you could use for your chest piece. Perfectly efficient synergizes incredibly well with the survivalist specialization to deliver a group wide heal every 10 seconds. The tardigrade armor system adds a group unbreakable talent that can proc every 45 seconds. But I just love perfect vanguard because it fits in so well with my playstyle and it's a proactive buff so I can just get on with dealing damage. And it's worth saying that with this build you won't be dead weight on damage output. I'm stacking critical hit chance and critical hit damage wherever I can. I'm also running a stinger high so I can apply bleed to large groups of enemies. With a 65% weapon damage buff to your shotties and 45% all damage buff to the poison and bleed you apply, this isn't a build that will need you to hang at the back. Now will your teammates thank you for all of the buffs that you are providing? Of course not, but at least you will know that their sports car builds really are compensating for something else. But if you do want to be the one driving that Testarossa, check out this build here.